But you know that what color he is, right? Exactly. Okay. Well, watch that. Let's keep reading. Read this. Read. And his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, uh -huh. and his eyes were a flame of fire, uh -huh. and his feet like unto fine grass, as if they burned in a furnace. So you know Christ is a white man, uh, a black man, right? Now watch this right here. Now, why do, why do you think it's important to know that Christ is a so-called black man, right? Here's the reason why. Give me John chapter 10 and verse 11. Because this is what we've been taught. We've been taught that this image right here is coming to save everybody, right? What you say? Well, here's, here's this is the message that we're trying to show our brothers and sisters. It's important to know that the greatest man that ever walked the face of earth is a so-called black man. Why is that? Because when you go into the Bible, it's promises for the children of Israel, so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American Indian. Now I'm going to show you one of the reasons why it's important to know that Christ is a black man. Read this, John chapter 10 and verse 11. Read this. The book of John, chapter 10 and verse 11. I am the good shepherd. Read it from the top again. I am the good shepherd. You see that? Christ said, I am that good shepherd. Christ, the so-called black man said, I am the good shepherd. Read. For the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. He do what? The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. You see that, my brother? This is why it's important. What we just read, Rick. What we just read. Christ said he's the good shepherd. He give his life for the sheep. Now you need to ask yourself, well, who are the sheep? We are the sheep. So what is that telling you? That Christ got up on that cross to die for us. He didn't come get up on that cross to die for everybody. Only the sheep. No, sir. That's what I'm showing you right now. You say he died for everybody, right? First for the house of Israel and then for the Gentiles. That's not true. Okay, we're going to go over there. You said the house of Israel and the house of the Gentiles, right? Let me ask you a question. Who are the real Gentiles according to the Bible? Because look, bro, everything we have been taught has been lies, bro. All right, but say this, say this, right? Go ahead. You know who, uh, what his name is? Cornelius. Cornelius, uh-huh. He's a Gentile, right? No, sir. That's what we come out here and try to show you. I'm talking about Cornelius. I know you're talking about in, in, the, in, the, in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 10. That's what we try to show you. When we go, when you hear these words like Gentile, they're neither Jew nor Greek or Gentile, this is what we don't understand. When you go into the Bible, it was a split in the nation of Israel. Wow. You have the southern kingdom and you have the northern kingdom. We don't know that the, the northern kingdom, they went in, went off, they went into idolatry, start serving other gods. Hold on, I got you. Start serving other gods. It's just like us, right? Think about us, right? This is not our homeland over here, right? We was brought over here. So when we came over here, now what? We followed the custom of America. What's, what's coming up in the next couple of days? What holiday coming up in the next couple of days? Our Independence Day. You said, you see what you said? Our Independence Day. Our country. Our Independence Day. Our now watch this. 1776. War, where were your forefathers and mother in 1776? No, no. Uh, well, no. You said, you don't know? Yeah, Come on, bro. My folks from here. I know. Right here in the mirror, I'm, saying, I'm asking you a question. Where were our forefathers and mother in 1776? What it was? I'm saying my family descended from uh, Indians. Like, we was always here. This right. is my land. Right, I got you. That's what I'm saying. Over here in America, our forefathers and mother was in slavery in 1776. Right. So you said this this is not our homeland. We was brought over here. That's the, that's the mystery what I'm trying to show you when you when you're talking about the Gentiles. Right. We was in slavery, so what? That's not our custom. I'm saying Jesus died for the Gentiles also. Hey, give me Matthew 4 15. What's going on? What's your name? Kobe. Kobe, right? Yeah. You'd have heard they say they need the Jew no Greek, right? You heard that neither Jew nor Greek, that means everybody can be saved, right? No, I'm saying when the, when the, when the good work was done, uh -huh. give it Jesus roll with all power in the hand. Right. you saying basically everybody can be saved. I'm saying he died for everybody he can be. Right, right. Watch yeah, I'm going to show you who the Gentiles got. No, no, no. Go ahead. You're saying whosoever. Uh huh. Not just Israel, not just Greek, right. not just Roman, not just Spanish. Right. Whosoever. Uh huh. Call on the name of who? But look, what right? verse 1 say? I'm just saying, who well, else? Well, I'm talking about what verse 1 say, because everybody quote John 3.16, but, but what do verse 1 say? That ain't John 3.16. That's that is John 3.16 you quote. So. You John said, for whosoever love the world. Whosoever love the world, that he gave his only brother got the son. Watch well, this. Watch this. Whoever called upon the name So whosoever, right? Watch this. But I had to say that to say this. Well, I ain't go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go uh, ahead. I want, I want to do one at a time. Just, so I want to do with the whosoever. Watch this. I'm with y'all. I'm with y'all. The book of Acts, chapter 2. 
Verse 21. I'm going to show you something. They taught us all nations can be saved. Christ did not die for everybody. Christ only died for me and you. That's why they taught this. But watch this. And it shall come to pass that whosoever, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel. Who can be saved? Ye men of Israel. Here. Did they say everybody? Oh, also. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you. Now go to Acts 5 and 30. Same book, different chapter. Right. Acts 5 and 30. So now you just heard that Israel is so Watch this. I got you. I'm going to pass it. I'm going to pass it back to you. Acts 5 verse 30. Verse 29. Verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God. Rather than me, we gotta obey God rather than uh, each other. I can't lean on my own understanding, and you can't either, right? Watch this. The God of our Father, that's possessive, read, raised up Jesus, Come on. whom ye slew Come on. and hanged on a tree. So we talk about Christ, right? Read. Him has God exalted Come with on. his right hand to be a prince uh -huh. and a savior read. for to give repentance. To give to repentance to who? To Israel to all nations to Israel oh. and forgiveness of sin. Christ only died for me and you, brother. Christ only died for me. I'm gonna show you who the real Gentiles is. Matthew 4 and 15. And then you go ahead. Cause they taught us Gentile mean all the nations. They guess what? It's half and half. It could partially mean other nations, but in this aspect, when you talk about Cornelius, it's talking about our people. The ten tribes, because you had Judah, which was the southern kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, Levi. The northern kingdom consisted of each on down. They was cast out due to idolatry. I'm here. Me and him you, can read that by every night. All praise. Watch this. Matthews chapter 4 verse 15 the land of Zebulun the land of Zebulun is on the side that would be the Guatemalans right and the land of Naphtali you got Naphtali that's the uh, Argentinas by the way of the sea uh -huh. beyond Jordan Galilee uh -huh. of the Gentiles what did they call those two tribes what what key word did you hear land of who land of the Gentiles he called Two northern kingdom tribes, Gentiles, right. because guess what? They was kicked out. They had got cast off. God stopped dealing with them. God stopped dealing with them. You get what I'm saying? Go to Acts 10. I want to touch that. For us, Cornelius. Go to Acts 10 and read verse 34. Watch this. Y'all stay ready. Acts 10. Because I know a lot, a lot of folks say Cornelius talking about everybody, right? I'm just saying the Roman. Roman centurion. Right. The Holy Spirit. The Roman centurion. Remember, he was a part. Remember, he was a part of an army. When they say centurion, baby, he's a part of an yeah. army. Uh -huh. That's all that was. That's but he right. was one. Right. right. There you go. But he was yeah. one of us. He was just like you got all people that be in the army today. No, he, was they just, he was a citizen. Cause let me ask you this: What was Paul? Well, Paul, Paul yeah. was a Roman citizen. Right. But what, what, was he a Jew? Yeah. Right, so where he was born, that made him a Roman, a Roman citizen. So that doesn't, so we, that's a sign that we're calling his. Because he's in his whole house, even his servants and everybody. Now, the now let's show you about him. Acts 10 verse 34 and then jump to 36. I'm going to show you who they were. The book of Nation. Nation is men leading by example. Oh, you know